Welcome to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. I'm Jeff DeVeronica with Steve Bradley. Steve talking some Section 5 football next here on episode... Well, let's not, let's not number the episodes because we jumble them up sometimes, right? Um, but anyway, some Section 5 football, and this is going to be a bit of a departure. It's not going to be just about football. It's going to be a little bit about life, too, and, and I know uh, those are some of the best interviews we do. They are, and um, got a special guest, uh, Scott Duschel from Webster Thomas Football, longtime coach, and uh, he had um, a big moment this week. He he rang the bell from his cancer treatments, and um, very inspirational. And uh, he's carved up some times for uh, for us, and we're very grateful for that. Four months. It's been four months since. Uh, well, we'll have Scott t- take you through that, and then uh, we're also going to have on a couple of his players join us, a couple of his captains, I believe. Uh, senior Jack Redker and uh, also uh, senior Brad Coleman will join us on our second segment. But let's welcome on to our Special Tees hotline. Again, Special Tees, a great company down in Geneseo. There he is, Scott Duschel, 21st season, I believe, as coach of the Webster Thomas Titans, a program that has only had one coach, uh, Scott Duschel. And um, I know uh, we're going to talk about football here in the, in the program, but I want to uh, also mention that uh, the weekend of the – the 30th, September 30th, Thomas is going to host Schrader, and obviously a big rivalry game, and that's going to be a fundraiser um, for uh, some sort of cancer fundraiser because you, sir, are, are still battling cancer and recovering from uh, treatments, and I want us to tell us about that, but tell us about the fundraiser and uh, what that night's going to be like for you uh, as, as a one Webster community, as I like to call it, comes together uh, at Thomas on uh, uh, September 30th. Well, to be honest with you, I uh, didn't put it together, so I don't really know where it came from. I know um, Coach Stump over at Schrader had his hand in that, a bunch of boosters, community members, and school members. Um, but they thought not only to celebrate, you know, high school football in the town of Webster, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great event, um, you know, to do something that could give back to our community. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, um, we're going through this right now or, or just finished my treatment, um, you know, and, and obviously being a, a participant in there, just the, the people who are involved with Wilmot are, you know, tremendous. Um, you know, not only the doctors and the nurses and the PAs, but the technicians and, the, you know, the receptionists and, you know, making, uh, you know, an unbearable, <laughs> unbearable uh, experience, bearable, I guess. Um, you know, and, and get you through that and always had a smile on their face and, uh, you know, would, would motivate you, um, not only myself, um, but more importantly, the, the masses of people. And this is the first time I've ever dealt with, with um, this horrific disease um, and just the inflow of patients day after day after day. It, it, it just amazed me from, from, you know, all walks of life. It, it it really, um, and to hear stories and, you know, just the people that were getting the treatments on either side of me or, you know, around the same time, um, truly inspirational. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great event to give back to um, families and give back to the, the cancer center to, to uh, help others that, that, that aren't as, as lucky as, as some of us. And, you know, the, the, mounting medical bills and the travel expenses and I mean the list goes on and on um you know I was able to um I guess work through it but it was summer so I'm a teacher um but listening to you know people who couldn't work through that uh didn't have didn't have any income coming in had to travel you know over an hour each way every day for treatments um you know it's 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 uh it's amazing what some of these people went through you know everybody well, I know that you're you're not teaching right now, and you're still in recovery, but you're doing some coaching when you can. Uh, a lot of it, you know, uh, depending on how you feel on the day. Let's take – and I wanted to have you on. Steve and I both want to have you on because we're both – we're all becoming men of a certain age, right, where uh, we're going to have to deal with stuff like this, right? Mid-50s, we're getting there. And um, tell us – I wanted to have you on because I wanted other guys to maybe watch this and say, first of all, go to the doctor if something's wrong. Don't wait. And um, – just mentally how you've been able to battle through this. But take us back to May, what happened, and um, we'll, we'll talk more. But tell us about the moment everything started to, to, go, to go wrong. Yeah, it was, you know, my wife said it, how, how life can change in a matter of minutes, um, and, and that being true to form. Um, you know, it was 
kind of laying on the floor, had was tired and, and um, picked my head up off the floor and noticed a pain in my in the side of my neck. And uh, I was like, oh, that's weird. And noticed there was a, a, a lump or a mass in there. Um, and after, you know, talking it over with my wife, she's like, okay, we, we have to go to the doctors. Um, we got to get this looked at. Um, and kind of the preclude that about 11 years ago on the other side, on the other side, I had a, a, another mass that was benign, that wasn't cancerous, that was removed. Um, and I just thought that that was uh, kind of what was happening at this point in time. Um, but from the point that we saw the ear, nose and throat doctor um, at Wilmot, from the time of the surgery, probably two days or three days, I think it was a, a Tuesday. And then we wound up having the surgery on either Thursday or Friday. And it was in, you know, it was crazy the way things flew. And, you know, we were talking over as a family and um, not knowing what to expect, really. And, and in my mind, I was thinking, OK, you know, it's just another it's just another you know, lymph node mass, whatever the case was. Um, and after the surgery, uh, um, the, the physician came in and he just said, it's, it's not good. And um, <laughs> kind of took Did he place. know it was cancer at that point? Did he, did they do a biopsy? Did they know that, that? He, he did not do the biopsy, but I said, well, how do you know? And he said, this is what I do for a living. And, um, you know, it was wrapped around, um, carotid artery, it was wrapped around, um, you know, it was in the base of your tongue and in my tonsils. So they removed what they could. Um, and then the healing process started with that. And then the, uh, the treatment um, process was formed and we started that on August 1st and that was seven weeks. So we went every day for radiation. Um, and originally we were supposed to have three bulk uh, chemos and we went through the first one, had some side effects, um, but then they decided to lower the dosage and do that every uh, every week. So I had chemo usually on a Monday, maybe Tuesday, um, and then radiation every day for 35 days. Wow. Scott, Jeff mentioned the phrase uh, one Webster at the beginning of the interview. How much has the community helped you get to where you were on Monday when you were able to ring that bell? Well, you know, I, I'm not a very public person. Um, and I felt, I didn't know if I really wanted to put that out there, but the outpouring of support, not only through, um, you know, colleagues, section five coaches, uh, former players, guys that I worked with, um, a used coach with, you know, it, it, it was unbelievable. Um, and like I said, community members, former students, it, it just, it was uh, it was very emotional uh, for me and my wife. Um. And I I know uh, I'll, I'll jump in here because I know I want you to collect yourself for a second. But I know you know as a coach, it's coaching's a grind, double sessions, and, and it's yeah. tough, right? And and I I don't know as the way your mind works as a coach, daily the daily grind of going down and getting treatment. Did that help you at all? Because you've, you've you just are, your mindset, and I know there's something else that helped you get through it too, a joyous thing in your family, um, because you're a grandpa, or you're going to be a grandpa. I'm, not, I'm sorry, are you a grandpa or you're going to be a grandpa? We are. Congratulations um, on that. So when did that all happen? How much did that help you? Uh, immensely. I mean, immensely. That was uh, July 18th, Carter was born. Um, unfortunately, he's in Buffalo, but you know, we've, we've put a lot of miles on the throughway and my daughter and um, son-in-law have been here quite a bit. Um, but definitely, you know, as I tell these guys, you know, how football prepares yourself for life. And that's been, you know, a mantra throughout my coaching experience. Um, you know, things are going to get thrown at you. All sorts of, excuse me, all sorts of stuff is going to happen to you. You know, how do you handle that? How do you move forward? Um, and I think the game of football is um, just a great catalyst in terms of how they uh, how you can process that, those downfalls and the highs and, and keep moving on in a steady um, pace, so to speak. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but that, before we do that, Steve, I got to go Rocky Balboa on you here. It's not about, it's not about, what's exactly, I'm going to butcher the phrase a little bit. Of, it's not about getting hit. How many times you get knocked down? It's how you get up? It's about how you get up, but it's about, you got to keep moving forward. 
Whatever right. you do, you're going to get hit. And anything you do in life, you got to keep going forward. Uh, right. That's how winning is done. That's how I think Mr. Balboa said that in the movie. Absolutely. Maybe Joe, in fact, we want to get a graphic and put it up there so you can see how badly I butchered that quote. <laughs> I used that once. I actually, I think I tweeted it once, too. Um, we'll take a quick break and bring out a couple of your players. Uh, we're talking with Scott Duschel and some Webster Thomas football right here on the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Looking for a used truck? Can you find one out of 350? At BobJohnsonAutoGroup.com, you'll find one. Love SUVs? 800 are waiting for you to take one home at BobJohnsonAutoGroup.com. Add 350 pre-owned sedans, and you've got a total of 1,500 used vehicles only at BobJohnsonAutoGroup.com. Bob Johnson's got your bike. Bob Johnson. While we celebrate 140 years of serving our community, the kind of delicious joy that lasts a lifetime, we look forward to serving you for 140 more with hardworking, wholehearted, passionate people who will help shape new memories for generations to come. When it comes to workers' comp, things can change quickly. The only way to make sure your rights are protected is to have a trusted, committed attorney on your side. An attorney who has devoted their career to helping injured workers. Someone to fight for the money and medical benefits you deserve. The only person on your side is the attorney at your side. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. The best three things here at McQuaid are definitely the sports, the brotherhood, and the service to community. I think that's a really big, important thing that McQuaid stresses, which is part of creating a better and great man. You definitely feel a connection with your fellow students here. It's being all guy school, you're able to relate to each other on a personal level, and everyone's very welcoming here with open arms and willing to be your friend. McDonald's operators care about our local schools, teams, and student athletes. That's why they support the return of high school athletics in the Rochester area and around the state. See you before or after the big game at McDonald's. Welcome back, Section 5. Game on! Protecting your home's worth pays off when you trust the experienced team at American Custom. We've all seen our homes go up in value, making home improvements a wise choice. If you think your home is worth a lot now, just wait until our team is done with it. Call American today. Welcome back to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. I'm Jeff D. Veronica with Steve Bradley. Special interview here. We're talk, we've been talking with Scott Duschel, the head coach of the Webster Thomas football program. And uh, we want to talk about his staff that's helped shoulder the burden while he's been gone. And we're going to bring on a couple of his players here, too. A couple of captains, both seniors. Joining us uh, now is uh, Jack Redker quarterback and safety, and also Brad Coleman, who plays on the, both the O-line and D-line for the Titans. Uh, they're going to be coming up with a big rivalry game. It's going to be a fundraiser game. If you're from Webster, if you care about Section 5 football, if you care about people and you want to donate, get over to Webster uh, Thomas on uh, September 30th, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of hats and buckets and ways to donate money. So, um, guys, first, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us, and uh, we've been talking to your coach, but... Um, I guess let's just start with you, Brad. I want to ask you, uh, seeing your coach go through this uh, as a teenager, and I can tell you from my old man, we used to tell me this, that being in high school, it's the best time of your life. You know, you're not paying all the bills. You know, you're with your friends all day long. But seeing your coach go through this, how does it? How has that impacted you personally? Um. Well, personally, I mean, he, he reached out to me um, – probably before a bunch of other guys. So, <clears throat> I mean, Coach Duschel has been around my life forever. You know, he's been uh, he's been there with, with me during youth, modified, basically my whole football career. So, 
when I heard, I mean, it kind of struck me a little bit, but I knew I had to, I had to stay strong for him and the team. So, you know, coming to practice every day, just like uh, rem- remembering that and like how you got to work and you got to do it for the coach. So that's all. That's what it's all about for me. Jack, how about the message? You're the, a quarterback and a safety. Quarterbacks have to be leaders just because you're vocal and everything. What's the messaging been like for you and your friends as you've rallied around coach? Uh, yeah, I think especially during double sessions when our energy was lacking a bit in the first one, like I tried to keep it light personally during those because those are the fun practices before we get really serious in the middle of the year. But whenever coach showed up, he usually came for those second sessions in the day after his treatment, and it just brought a spark of energy to the whole team. And it felt like I didn't have to like try as much to bring the energy, and everyone was playing with that same energy, and we really felt like a team when he came and showed his face at practice, and it really just made everything a lot better for everyone, I feel like. Scott, how has it been for you when you've been around the team? What what do you like about this this group that you have, not just as football players but as young men? I mean, as young men, I don't think it gets better than than this group. I mean, these these guys are are not only um, you know put all in fields, but you know you look at them in the classroom and any of our community service projects. These guys are the first guys to step up and want to help other people. So it, it says a lot about them as the two leaders that we have here and then the whole the whole the whole team um these two lead by example um you know are, are helping out with our youth are helping out with our, our young kids at camp um and just great role models as a whole um but you know it, it doesn't get better than working with these guys and, and just to be out there with them you know talk about you know uplifting experience and i think you know i'm definitely getting more out of it than uh than they are um, during the, during the practices and, you know, just, just continue to build relationships with these young men, um, you know, finding out what they're doing in the future and, you know, what their goals and what their dreams are. Scott, of all the coaching staffs in high school sports, uh, there's always the most on the sideline of a football, a football staff. Uh, mm-hmm. who were some of the guys that have, have stepped up and, uh, on your staff and shoulders the burden while you had to take care of your own business? Well, I mean, the two on my staff is uh, Eric Thurley, who's my offensive coordinator, who kind of took over the the, the role as in, in both Jason and David and both my coordinators. Um, those guys really kind of weathered the storm um, and anything I needed, you know, reached out to them and they would be the first ones to to stop by or um, to, to make sure I wasn't stressed going through this. Um, you know, they, they've been great. Um, but everybody from from top to bottom, to be honest with you. Um, we're not only, you know, work together and colleagues, but, you know, best friends too. Brad, um, coaches are always talking about the life lessons that sports teach. Sometimes those lessons are difficult. You guys are experiencing one of the most difficult now. Um, what, you know, sometimes in the football field, it's pretty tough too. It is. You're gonna, but so tw- 37 to seven and 24, nothing. Those first two weeks, those couldn't have been fun either, but just <laughs> keep, <laughs> but when you, when you see real life like this, does it, you know, does it help you keep life in perspective and, and understand that um, hard work and everything, you, you, you just have to keep keep on keeping on? And even a bad loss is not the biggest bad thing it's, in the world. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, the, it's a game, right? And we all play it. We all play it for different reasons. Um, but it teaches you how to deal with adversity and, like, how to – how to handle things going on like outside of football. And I mean, you can use football to, to cover it, most of it up, but I mean, you got to go home to it after practice, after games and stuff. So it's all about how you handle it and like the character that you have to like keep pushing and keep, keep showing the hard work and keep being a leader on the field and off the field. You know, coach said these guys were good talkers. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack, let me ask you, the first two weeks, 24 nothing Brighton, 37-7 Hilton, and then you come back with a big win, 43-6 to over Olympia Odyssey. What did you all learn about, the, about yourselves in the first two games um, that you corrected for game three? I think, per, uh, for me personally, it was intensity. 
I felt like after those first two games, we flipped the switch both in practice and in our next game at Greece Olympia. The, the week after Hilton, it was tough for us, and we knew we were going to have to be pushed a little bit harder. And so we just started – we started going at it in practice, like full on every day, like conditioning right after we go full on, and everyone's exhausted by the end of practice. And our coaches have been preaching that football should be the hardest thing that you do every day in practice. If it's the hardest thing that you're doing, you're doing it right. And I've really kind of taken that personally. And I feel like if every day I can go out and give my best and give my best for my team, then I'm doing something right. And I feel like everyone else on the team can relate to that. And we're starting to put forth that effort that we need to be a, a successful program. These guys are good sound bites. I like that. <laughs> Coach Dushal, I know there are days when you don't feel good, right? Obviously. Are you able to watch some film? Can you watch some film and break some stuff down? Are Absolutely. you able to... Absolutely. What have you seen? What did you didn't? What didn't you like in those first two weeks that you uh, like that you saw get better in week three? Well, I mean, we have, in, in all honesty, we we had a huge graduating class last year, so we knew we were coming in with with younger kids, not not Brad and um and Jack, but younger kids in in key roles, um, and knew that was going to be a growth process. Um, but these guys, throughout, as as Jack stated, throughout, you know, their leadership and their and their kind of circle on the wagon, so to speak, um, really brought these kids together. Um, you know, it, it, I don't think there's, we have a bunch of sophomores up with us too. So, you know, looking forward to the future, that's good. But, you know, at that point in time, I don't know if they were ready for a varsity football game, especially the caliber of, and the physicality of, of Hilton and Brighton. Um, but, you know, they're, they're getting there. So um, it's great to have, you know, leaders like these two guys, to bring less, the rest of the troops along with us. So. Hey, Brad, um, it's always the most fun to play against the people you know the best, right? That's where the rivalry comes from. What's What do you anticipate that atmosphere being like when you take the field against Schrader? Uh, I just know it's going to be electric. <laughs> I mean, it always is when we play against each other. I mean, even even outside of football, like if we were to play like a soccer game or something not so physical, I know it'd still be pretty fun to watch. So I'm ready for like a pretty physical game and I'm ready to to feel the energy coming from the stands and the pretty much the whole county because when that game happens, you you know what's happening. So I'm excited for that. No, what are, no matter what happened against Gates, uh, you guys, you're going to be the underdog against Schrader, I think. Jack, do you like being the underdog or do you really be the favorite in this game? Uh, personally, I love being an underdog. I feel like when I walked into those games against Hilton and Brighton, I felt like the energy was electrifying to me, being kind of like hated in the stadium that you're walking into. And I feel like this game with Schrader and Thomas, it's something special because it's really a game of momentum because one half of the stands is packed with Schrader fans and the other side is packed with Thomas fans. And it's really the only game this year where if you're winning, you got a whole student section cheering you on. And if you're losing, you got a whole student section cheering against you. So no matter what you do, it's going to be electric for either team. It's going to be loud and it's going to be fun. And personally, I like being underestimated because I want to prove people wrong. So I'm excited to see how it goes. Should be pretty fun, right, Steve? Should be good. It should be good. Guys, uh, we uh, we appreciate you talking uh, candidly about uh, your coach, uh, and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. And whatever week it is, uh, you guys have already learned some really uh, good lessons about life uh, over the past few months. And Coach Duschel, guys, thanks for being on the show. You two guys, tremendous job. Fantastic. Well done. Um, thanks, Frank. Appreciate thank you. You're, well, you're welcome. Co Bye. Scott, what's next? What's next for you? <laughs> I got one more big, I got one more important, important question for you, but what's next for you? What's the next? Do you got to go back to the doctor every week, every month? How does it work now? He, you know, I have a, a barrage of follow-up appointments. Um, you know, it seems every week I go back to different oncologists and radiologists and um, different different people. Um, the big telltale sign is going to be the PET scan right before Christmas, and uh, you know, hopefully we get some good news there. What? Someone facing a similar scenario that you have, what advice would you give them about how to get to the other side of the treatments and then, fingers crossed, many, many, many decades beyond this? Right. This, this was 
much more challenging than I ever thought it would be. Um, you know, just keep grinding every day, kind of nose to the grindstone and uh, do what the doctors tell you, I guess. Scott, we wish you the best. Thank you for carving out some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got a lot of people pulling for you. Yep. I, I wanted to do this because I want I want all everyone out there is watching this. If something's wrong, go to go to the doctor, get it checked out. Um, if they say it's nothing, fantastic, but you got it checked out. Um, Scott Duchel did it, and he's talking with us right now. So, for Steve Bradley and Joe Broad, I'm Jeff D. Veronica. Thank you, Webster Thomas and Scott Duchel, for sharing your story with us. You're watching us right here on the Cousin Ferris High School Sports Show. Oh!